great introduction. Um, hi, everyone. I'm going to do this talk in English. There are some friends of me at the right back that are not native Dutch speaking. Uh, the goal for me today um, is actually for you to meet data. What's the reason of meeting data? I'm not talking about meeting data in a speed dating kind of way. I'm talking about meeting data like a high quality conversation kind of way. Why is that necessary? Data is in our lives on a day to day basis. It's everywhere. It's continuously present. However, for some of us, it's something abstract, something conceptual. For others, it's something about bits and bytes and factual. So there's no real consensus of what data really is, which means as a society, we need to get an understanding of what it actually is. In order to be able to do so, we all can become coders or programmers, but that's not going to happen. In the next generation, there will be more programmers amongst us, but the vast majority of us won't be. So we need simple things to understand what data is and what it can mean to our lives. So that's why today I want everybody of you to meet uh, data. I'll be a happy guy if at the networking drinks there would be three key messages that stick with every one of you. Message number one is actually the way we look at things as human beings changes over time. That's message number one. Message number two, I think we're all in this together. We're all data citizens and it affects all of us. And message number three is actually a word. It's a trust. The companies that will win tomorrow are those that can deal with your data with trust. There's a high possibility that you will only remember the meat and data thing, but that's also perfectly fine. Okay, meat and data both have been in my life since I was a 10 year old. I grew up in a small village back in the forests of Limburg, very well hidden in a call that in a town that we call Korspel. Uh, people who live in Korspel call it Kuspel, but I call it Korspel today. And back in the days in the 90s, the men that worked there were real men. Like my dad, he was a real, he was a mine worker. So when he got home, he ate two pieces of steak, two pieces of meat. For him, it was justified. He had like arms like this, but for me and my, and my sister, we also felt that if we had a meal without meat, that it wasn't a real meal. Today, the men of today, they eat hamburgers without a hamburger in. For my dad, he would eat those kind of men for breakfast. <laughs> so the way we look at things, the way we look at meat changes over time. At the same time, sometimes it's because of it's a change in trend. Sometimes it's because uh, science has made us smarter. Let's take the case of tobacco. In 1953, it was proven beyond any doubt that you get cancer from smoking. Simple. In 2011, that's 58 years later, the Belgian government issued a law that smoking was prohibited in public areas. So it takes time for us to position things like tobacco, things like meat in our society. So the question today is data. How long will it take for us as a society to give it a well place that it deserves? That we can estimate the consequences of it, good and bad, for our children, for all the generations to come. I think things like this, laws, they help in giving things a place in society. And for me, this was a bridge which I studied by heart for the second, to the second key message, which was actually, we all have rights and duties. As data citizens, we all have rights and duties. Okay, so let's, let's take people. There are more and more people year after year, but the growth in inhabitants of the world is nothing compared with growth in data volume. IDC, which is a market research firm, predicts that in 2025, we will create and copy 180 zettabytes a year. A zettabyte, that's like uh, some things with 21 zeros every year. Most of that data we generate ourselves and we give away for free. And that's something that seems a bit odd to me because I'm somebody who lives by the philosophy, you give something and you get something in return. So for instance, with uh, paying taxes, you pay money, and in return you get uh, states or roads that are in good condition, you get an educational system that's open for everyone, or you get facilities that take care of the elderly. So you get something in return. If you do not agree, there are elections, and during election time you can change your mind and you can try to change the government. That's because we're all citizens of a nation with rights and with duties. It's the same with data. Every one of us, is a data citizen. We give it away most of the time for free. And we get little things in return, little things like a better service or better promotion. And with being a data citizen, there comes the fact that we're all 
that we all need to understand that there's also something like data citizenship. Also regarding data, we have rights and we have duties. And the way they come forward, they can be in several things. Like one of the things is, for instance, a law. It's a simple thing in which you can show that there's a right and a duty. For instance, when it comes to data, my company, this is, we are obliged to publicly announce our profit and loss statement every year. In return, I can see that of my competitors. Level two, for instance, is a contract or an agreement or procedure. As a consumer of a retail company, okay, I subscribe to a loyalty card, so I give away my purchase behavior, which is data, and they use it to give me better promotions. That's like a level two thing. And the level three thing, which is actually the most powerful of all, that's the feeling of a shared responsibility, of common sense. Like for instance, Strava. So Strava is a fitness tracker, so I give away my location, and in return, I can see other people's performance. If I don't give away my location, there's nothing to benchmark, and I cannot see it. So it's just a matter of shared responsibility and common sense. Now, let's zoom in on one specific law. A law that will help, I believe, in giving data a position in our society. Uh, most of the people already heard of GDPR. GDPR stands for Global Data Protection Regulation, and it's enforced, it will be enforced the 25th of May by the European Union. Today it's a very hot topic. This is actually one of, a nice example where the government is trying to give data deliberately a place in our society. For a lot of companies now, high level of stress. They want to be compliant before the 25th of May. However, I think this is just a start. Becoming GDPR compliant is not only about checking the box, it's not only about surviving an audit, it's not only a matter of regulatory affairs, this is about treating your data well and the data of your consumers. So it shouldn't be a responsibility of the law, it should be what I call a level three responsibility, a matter of common sense for everybody. Because this will generate trust. Trust is keyword number three, I will get to that soon. The sooner you can generate trust, and the sooner, as a company, you will be ready for the future. And the sooner the CEO or the board of directors of everybody understands it's a shared responsibility, the more powerful it will be. Never underestimate the impact of shared responsibility of a culture in your organization. This is the herald of free enterprise. That day, 193 people died. Investigations showed it was partly due to technical failure, but another part was because the crew members were drunk. Now, you need to understand that if you drink a beer on a boat, you literally see the people passing by whose lives are jeopardizing. You hear them screaming when they drown. The case with data, if you don't treat it well, you, if you're lucky, you see bits and bytes. But behind those bits and bytes is every one of us. It's also real humans, you just don't hear them scream. So the thing is, organizations need to understand that taking care of their data is the same thing as taking care of their consumers. So it's not a matter of responsibility for only the data department, only IT, only compliancy. It's a matter of shared responsibility for everyone. And that will generate trust. And trust is actually my bridge to the third thing I want to mention, the impact of trust in the data world. Trust is a thing that if it's not there in any relationship, it's recipe for disaster. So let's just zoom in on the relationship between a consumer on the one hand and a producer on the other. Let's take this cow. Now we get to the meat thing. Uh, this is a cow. However, it seems to be a nice cow, but if you're at a restaurant, this is not what you get on your plate, obviously. The thing you get on your plate is this. So as a consumer, I sometimes need to trust that what I eat there is okay because they do all kinds of things in between that I don't understand. Things that if they don't do it well, it impacts me. I can get sick or can even die. So that's the thing with meat. We don't see what happens in the factory, but if it doesn't go well, it can become very messy. The thing is that with data, it's exactly the same. We don't see what's going on, but when it's not well done, it can be very messy. So let me just quickly zoom in on the data processing part. So let's say here, we have a, I'm standing here, this is a meat factory. So in the meat factory, Daisy, the cow here, she comes in, or the carcass of, 
the cloud comes in, where we look at the data factory, and the data factory is every organization that processes data, which means today it is not only Facebook, not only Google, it's your bank, it's your retailer, it's everyone. So every company is a data factory. So they get raw data coming in. And look at the thing here, it's called raw meat, and here it's called raw data, it's the same. Some people like raw data, some people they like raw meat, it's the same. When you go into the data factory, and you start processing, you do, which is the next step, you do all kinds of things with data. You clean it, you blend it, you transform it, you enrich it. It's still not an end product. When you look at a factory of meat, it's exactly the same. You clean it, you enrich it, you put other flavors, you blend it with other kinds of meat, and in the end, in the third step, which is the step forward, you have something, this is the cleaning and the stuff, you have something on your plate, something that you can consume. With data, it's the same. It's the integration in an application, a visualization on a map, a dashboard, something you can consume. However, you did not see the whole process behind. And that's the thing where I think we need to go to. I think we need to get an understanding, a sense of transparency of what happens in data factories. Something easy. And it's not new. It's not new. We have all kinds of ratings. We have book ratings. We have credit risk ratings for financial institutions. We have, indeed, when we look at meat, there are quality labels that give us, as clients, a kind of confidence in what we consume. In the data world, it's a dashboard or it's whatever that it's of a specific standard, because if it doesn't, if it didn't go well, it can harm us. And let's be honest, data processing, the process of processing data, it is built under constraints. It's not built in, in perfect circumstances. It's built with tight budgets, strict deadlines, a CEO that wants to get something live, and some things go wrong in the middle, always. It can be because people make mistakes, but there's also a very slight possibility that people sometimes cheat, that they use data for their own benefit and that they do things with it to influence things. There have been occasions that it happens. So let's not be naive. We need to get an understanding of what happens with our data. And it can be easy things, very easy things. So what do we, do we need to start to understand? I think there are three things. Number one is, what does a data factory do in terms of security and ethics? Is my data protected well? If there's a breach, how quickly can they respond? And what can they do? I think we need to know. For instance, on the data processing part, are the data streams documented? Do they have the knowledge to do what they are able to do? The algorithms they are used, are they cross-validated enough? I think we need to know. And for instance, on the third part, the data quality is the same thing as with the quality of meat. If the meat is not comes in, lacks quality, your end product will lack quality. It's the same with data. So I think we need to know what they do on data quality. So if you take all that together, I think we as data citizens, as consumers, we have a right on transparency. And the thing is that in the future, I think that the companies that do not succeed in providing that transparency, transparency proactively, I think they will, like it's in the press today, they will be excluded. At a certain point in time, we will no longer share data with data factors we don't trust. So that means we will go into base our decision on which, whose bank are we going to work with, which retailer, which insurance company will be depending on who do we trust with our data. I would like to conclude with giving a summary of what does this mean for every one of us. With, when you take the resemblance, the resemblance with meat, for instance, if at a certain point in time you do not longer trust the meat, industry, it's easy, you step out. You, s you become a vegetarian. That's basically stepping out of meat life. In the case of data, as a data citizen, you cannot step out. It's like Hotel California. You can check out, but you can never leave. If you leave, there's a high chance that you'll be kept away from society in the future, because data is here to stay. The train is rolling, it's not going to stop. So what does this mean for companies or policymakers? Not becoming a data factory is not an option. You will no longer be competitive. So there's a whole new world that's being generated as we speak between data citizens and data factories. And the data factories that will win are those that are able to get our trust and are able to do so. In order to be able to do so, they need to be 
transparent proactively on what they do with our data. It's as simple as that, because those who won't, they will be excluded by the data citizens. And so I think for all of us, the last two sentences, I think as of tomorrow, after the drinks tonight, I think we all need to be a bit more critical and a bit more demanding on what we do with data on a day-to-day -day basis. And the quicker we do so, the higher the probability that you will be part of the winning team during and after this revolution, which is already going on. Thank you.